Welcome to Geometry Pre AP. Uh, today we're going to talk about congruent figures, so please make sure you write down this essential understanding question here, which is that you can determine whether two figures are congruent by comparing their corresponding sides and angles. So that's kind of the basis of our lesson today. All right, and so our first is the concepts for congruent polygons. It says that uh, congruent polygons have corresponding congruent sides and angles. When you name congruent polygons, you must list corresponding vertices in the same order. So as of today, order matters. So in this first one right here, you see that it goes A, B, and so on the other figure should be E, F. And so if I list angle A, it's got to be angle E. And uh, these vertices here, here and here and here, match with these. And so this is a congruency statement, which helps you know which pieces correspond to each other. Now, when you're listing a polygon, you just list all the vertices. If you're listing a triangle, a triangle would have a triangle symbol, and then like A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F, and so we know that angle uh, letter A, vertex A matches with D, D matches with E, and C matches with F. So order matters, and if you don't write it in the correct order, we will be marking it wrong when you're doing work. Remember guys, details is an important part of geometry. <clears throat> so one of the theorems we need to highlight here is the third angle theorem. The third angle theorem says that if you have two, yeah, one angle on one triangle congruent to another angle on the, a different triangle, and then the second angle on the triangle is congruent to the second angle on the other triangle, then the third angle must also be congruent. Okay, this does not prove the triangle is congruent, <clears throat> it just proves that the, all the angles would be congruent. So, if you had two triangles, <clears throat> that's not a very good triangle. Alright, and here's another one, and I said this was 50, and this is 50 degrees. And this is 100 degrees, and this one's 100 degrees. Well, triangles out to be 180, so there's only 30 degrees left for this triangle and 30 degrees left for there. So that third angle would have had to be congruent. So highlight that theorem. All right, so it says name the corresponding angles and sides. So pause the video and see if you can write these sides in the correct order like it was in the two slides before this. And make sure you look carefully at the order. Okay, so let's see here. If we have A, B, we're going from this one to this one. So that's a double congruence mark to a single congruence mark. So this should be I, H. Double mark to the single mark. If we have T, A, that's from the triple mark to the double mark. And so I go from the triple mark to the double That is P, I. All right, and if we have P, H, which is a triple mark to the single mark, triple mark to a single mark is going to be TB. Alright, now these are angles. Uh, this was back when I did this thing a long time ago, so that angle symbol is from just regular old less than on a keyboard. So we have angle ABT. So ABT, that's a double, a single, and a triple mark. So a double, a single, a triple mark. So that would be IHP, and this is angle IHP. Now, before we continue on with this, let's stop and let's make this a little bit easier. All right. So the first triangle is triangle B A T. And the second triangle, if we go B A T, I went from single mark, double mark, and triple mark. Single mark would be H I T. So if I look at these, these are the letters in order with the congruent signs, and just like the marks, the sides on the the sides are marked that way. Now let's look at HPI. HP. Oh gosh, I need to do that. All right, so HPI. HPI. So if I follow the same order over here, HPI, it's going to be BTA. So this is going to be angle BTA. All right. Let's look at another one. All right. T A B. So T A B. So this is going to be P I H. So angle P 
P-I-H. So a congruent statement can help you label these things correctly. All right, so just like this one, it says identify the corresponding parts. So we have triangle RST is similar to triangle, or sorry, not similar, congruent to triangle LMM. So if we look at, we have side RS, RS we congruent to what on the other one? LM. We have ST would be congruent to MN. We would have RT is congruent to LN. Let me remind you that there's three pairs of sides. Just like there's three pairs of sides, there's also three pair of congruent angles. So I would have angle RST is congruent to angle LMN. I would angle STR is congruent to angle MNL. And now I have angle TRS is congruent to angle NLM. And so these are the three pairs of corresponding parts. So it takes six pairs of corresponding pieces of information if you have congruent triangles. So six pairs of congruent corresponding parts. That means in order to say two triangles are congruent, you have to know all six pairs of these things are congruent or be told the figures were congruent to start. All right, so as we go into this one, it says find the value of x and y. Here it just told us that the two triangles are congruent. If you want to pause the video, pause the video, try to find x and y and see what you get. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, there's some stuff in here trying to, to punk you a little bit. So let's start with the easy part. Let's start with finding the angle. So if angle F is here, it has to be congruent to angle J. So we have F and J. So here's F, here's J. So we're going to make those congruent. So that means 4X minus 20 equals 108 plus 20 plus 20. 4x equals 128, x is equal to 32. Easy enough there. Now we need to find the y value. So I've got this equation here, 3y minus 15. That's for part JL. So that's these two parts right here, JL. So I have to match it with FH. If you try matching it with the 8, the 8's not the corresponding parts in the congruent same. Well, it has to be 12. So 3y minus 15 equals... 12. So don't get punked by this information. Make sure you match the corresponding parts together. So 3y equals 27, y is equal to 9. Again, look in this congruent statement to see what information matches with which. Again, details, guys. You've got to pay attention to the information given to you in the problem. It's going to give you something or tell you what you do. All right, so it says for these two questions here, it says, can you conclude that the triangles are congruent? Justify your answer. So we're looking to see, are the six pairs of information in here true that I could use? So if I look at this first set of triangles, it has a single mark and a single mark, a double mark and a double mark. So two sides are congruent, two pairs of sides. We have a single angle mark and a single angle mark, a double angle mark and a double angle mark. Now, the third angle theorem says I can actually make this angle congruent to this one since the other two are congruent. But I'm still missing this side. But then let me ask you, let's look at this picture here. Would TK, the side, be congruent to TK? Well, I hope you would say yes because this is the reflexive property. TK is congruent to TK. It can be used in congruent sign. It's saying this side's equal to the same side. So one side's equal to itself. So I've got my third side here. And so I've got three, six pairs of information. So yes, the triangles are congruent. So let's look at this one. We have a seven and a seven. 
but then that's it. If there is an 8, there's a 6. We have no angle marks. So these are not congruent triangles. You need six pairs of information to be able to say that. All right. So here we go. Pause the video. Work these problems out. Remember that you're looking at corresponding information. All right, so now that you've done working these problems, so you can check your answer. Remember, we're going to be looking for your work for these. I'm going to go ahead and put a star on these, so that makes me know that you needed to do these questions. And so when you're done with those, you should get x is equal to 10, and a is equal to 2. Make sure you have your work for this. No work, no credit in your video notes. All right, so let's try these also. All right, you may pause the video and continue your work here. All right, when you have these done, you should check your answer. This is one answer should be t is equal to 2, the other one should be x is equal to 15, and this one should be x is equal to 5. Make sure you have your work shown for those so that you can get credit. And that wraps up this video for tonight. See you in class.